I've only been here for about a week, but I would, I would like to spend two. I think that would be a really good amount of time. A lot of my own work kind of corresponds with landscape, so this is kind of a research activity for me. Everybody comes out to the desert for different reasons. Historically, that's always been true. There's situations where the group will all go and, and on a hike or something or cook dinner together, but then people kind of hang out in their pods, which is what is so cool about the way that the wagon stations have been designed. You can have that private time without it seeming like you're defecting from the group or something. <laughs> Somebody please enjoy that. I would love to eat that. Do you want to just claim it? Sure. I also have an onion and apples. And I'm totally jealous. <laughs> I think it's such a brilliant idea and the way she's used the space. I also think it's a really interesting model. It's a private residence. It's not an official residency per se, but she opens it up twice a year to let people come. And it's, a, I think, a really progressive way of having artists and creative people work together and meet with a no pressure environment too. I did a lot of hiking and I did some filming and some reading. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm working on a journal as well. So uh, Andrea was very generous in, in talking to me about that. Generosity doesn't happen that often with regard to land these days. So I think that's really radical. Okay, so the new problem is that the paper gets stuck under the letters. I'm so drawn to the frontier mentality and that idea of having to figure everything out from scratch. There have been two generations of wagon stations and the first generation I essentially gave to friends and people who I collaborated with who would come out here and stay for periods of time. But it was always the same person visiting each wagon station and they would customize them. In those instances, each wagon station was autonomous and it would have its own camp stove within it then at a point we extracted those because they were starting to fall apart in the elements and they've sort of traveled to exhibitions since then and with these we've made them all like they're all sort of the standard version like the way i designed them there's locks on either side uh, for this to open up and there's like little strings up there to put your clothes on there's also a door in the back that locks so if you need any extra air just a quick way out and you can leave it open when you sleep. Um, it gets a little cold though, so I usually close it. And there's a shelf for everything that you need, and that's pretty much it. I watched the full moon arc across the entire sky over the course of the evening. You're inside and you can see the environment framed by Andrea's designs really consciously and intentionally. Now we have the communal kitchen and the outdoor showers and the composting toilets. This is a sort of communal living situation that only works because it's a certain amount of time and we send people all of these protocol sheets out before they come. Okay, so if you want to follow Dean and do that on everyone, the double layer, um, and if you want you could take that too and then just put like a little edge four inches in. I think that the wagon station encampment was sort of slowly walking into a situation of inviting other people to come be here. 
we always say it's sort of a cross between a retreat and a residency and a normal campground. It would be redundant to create like another art residency when there's so many of them. Everybody has their desert fantasy. And so my particular fantasy was probably living on an alien landscape. When NASA tests habitation on Mars, they have a station in the Mojave Desert, and I always thought that was so interesting that this is the landscape that was chosen to be most representative of another planet. I think the aesthetic of these was sort of a, a sci-fi pioneer aesthetic. And I don't know if that's my aesthetic now because it's constantly changing. My great-grandparents were pioneers just south of here and they settled in the Imperial Valley. The temperatures in the Imperial Valley are about 10 degrees hotter than here and this gets pretty hot. When I feel like complaining, I keep thinking about them. They would live in a tent and I guess they poured water over the tent to cool things off. It's so funny, I get upset when people say there's nothing here. Okay. Thank you so much. It was yeah. really magical and inspiring yeah, and awesome. Great to meet you. You too. And yeah. what an honor to meet you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Have a good trip. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. But there's something about this space that I think really calls to people who want to try and invent their own structures for living.